Hi, what's up everyone? So summer is over, or not really over, but it's time to get back to 3D printing. So um, I'm running a few videos as we speak. I have some models here and some filaments over here. Um, but today I want to show you 10 techniques for inserting or embedding things into your 3D prints. So I will, have, I will show you some inspirational things and some tactical techniques how you can improve your 3D prints by adding other hardware. It's, uh, we're going to go through magnets, bolts, uh, carbon fiber, wire, sand, a bunch of things. So uh, stay tuned for the top 10 or at least 10 of the things that I think that you can put inside a 3D model. So let's go! Okay, so first off is bearings. So um, adding bearings to your 3D prints can be really useful. So in this case, I have bearings on a uh, camera slider. So the idea here is that you have a part that is easy to build the printers. You can see the flat bottom on the surface, and then you can just put that into a, um, a bearing. So with that, you can return uh, rotate freely. So here we'll put in the part inside of the bearing. You should make these pretty snug so they do um, stick and, and keep themselves at position. Number nine, lead enclosures. So 3D printing can be really cool to enclose uh, lead lamps. So you can put in electronics, you can make a pass in the print and, and uh, add some uh, wires or anything like that. I think this can be a pretty cool, interesting effect. And in some cases you can even have like glass window of the PLA or uh, ABS material that you're printing with. Number eight, magnets. It's really cool to put in magnets inside of your prints. Um, that means that you, that you can easily snap different parts together. You can make toys that um, clamp together or just signs that you can put on the refrigerator, for example. So the same process here, you want to pause your print and uh, make sure that they are stuck inside. Number seven. Sand or scrap metal to add some weight. So here I'm just having a box, I have a quite large infill. And the idea then is that I print these parts and I will then just let it pass. So you should see it pass around here. And I then just pour in some sort of um, um, weight. Usually you will use some fine sand or something like that. But I don't have that so I'm going to use some bolts. And then you just click resume and continue printing. Number six, fibers and resin inside. So this is a really cool ID. Um, I'm actually working on something similar, but it's on the outside of the model. So this guy here over at Instructable, he puts uh, glass fiber and resin inside of his model just to add some strength and to um, make it stronger basically so you can put some more load on the finished part. Really cool. Number five, slots for nuts and bolts. So for my camera products, I usually do um, some sort of easy assembly of the bolts and the nuts. So nuts here, for example, they go into a groove and then they, uh, they will self-lock uh, more or less. So you can see here that this screw actually locks inside when you put it in. So as soon as you put some force, it will lock itself into that slot over there. So you can see one other example where I just take the side here of the bolts, I push it in. Make sure that it's centered with the hole. I actually use the screw that I will then screw in. And then you just screw the screw in and it will also make sure that the bolt can't move uh, in, in rotation. So you're actually locking and then you can screw to, um, to put some force on that. I use this all the time. Number four, embedded and hidden nuts. So this is more similar to the last example, but in this case you actually hide the bolts and nuts completely. So inside the model you have to make sure that you have a slicer where you can uh, avoid using support materials, for example, inside the model, and then you just hide the bolts inside. Number three, heat insertions. So if you want to do something where you screw something into a model, this is a really good example. So you make a, a circle hole that is a little bit too small, and then you put your um, he heater and it will melt inside and then it gets stuck real well. So if you want to do electronic uh, enclosures and so on, it's a good example. Number two, fabric and wires. 
So in this example, you take some um, some cool fabrics, some with uh, some sort of mesh, and then you start to print. You pause it midways, and you just place your fabric over there. You stretch it over, and then you continue the print, and the print will actually go through the um, uh, the wire, and you have um, some cool cloth 3D prints. Number one, carbon fiber wires. This is a great way to add some strength over your uh, prints. So uh, maybe not the easiest part, but the, it's actually really cool that you can just um, uh, make some grooves and then you thread some wires over. I'm gonna link you to his video down below. There's also a, a printer that can do all of this. It's the MarkForge printer. It has an extruder that includes like a, a single, single wire in, inside of the whole model to make it really, really strong. 